Welcome to day four of our uh, ERP Next Inventory Management Module study. And today we are going to be looking at uh, how to create an item, or we are rather going to be exploring the different uh, options we have in the item that we have in ERP Next. So I will go to the stock module here. Of course, I have item there, but I'll go to the stock module. And this is, of course, the module that we are exploring. And you can see here we have an item so if you click on this it's going to bring you to this form and you can click on create new item and you are here you can start creating the other option when you are wherever you are you can just go here and look for item remember i told you this is called awesome search then you click on this and you get back to the same place so when we are here we can click on this create your first item button if it you have one item then you this this thing is not going to be here you're going to have a list of your items and then there is this going to be this button so you can go ahead and click here it has the same functionality once you are here you notice that we have the item code we have the item group we have this so basically this is a small model that pops up with a few fields but there's a button that says edit full form the use of this model is so that you're able to capture the quick information quickly if for some reason you need to enter an item and sell it quickly or you need to take an, a quick action for an item which is supposed to be in the system that is when we can use this form otherwise our advice that you use the edit full form and then you can capture your item details properly so again here just like we had in the warehouse we have details we have inventory we have accounting we have purchase we have sales tax quantity and manufacturing so we are going to be looking at one of them one by one i will i may not explore all of them deeply i will uh, uh, try to rush through the most important aspects because again i don't want the video to be like a movie a very long one yeah so the first thing we have here is the item code and the item code is the unique identifier of the item. Now, below here we have item name. So what's the difference between item code and item name? The item name is the actual name of the item. For example, if you are selling a, 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 a OnePlus mobile phone, this is going to be something like OnePlus, maybe 10T, okay? And then the item code is the unique identifier. and there is a rule that says that if you have just a few items to manage then your item name and item code should be the same that is going to be easy for your staff to master the different items that you have in stock but if you have uh, say hundreds of items to manage or thousands or maybe what you refer you you can consider as many items and maybe sometimes these items have very lengthy names yeah so sometimes maybe even when you have few items but then have lengthy names it's important to create an item code for them for ease of saving and of course retrieval but if you have hundreds of items thousands of items many items uh, in, 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 simply then it is very important to create this how do you create it if for example this is one plus plus 10 T uh, plus is written like that plus is written like that one plus 10 T for example and uh, of course now uh, we can say this is maybe into bracket black yeah then here you can have something like maybe uh, 1923 as the item code yeah so this is basically a number that you can remember quickly so you can have the item codes your item coded and if you don't have them ERP next also enables you to use a series a naming series remember we discussed that when we were looking at the warehouse setup so if you do not know that and i also believe i have another youtube video for that so you can look at what naming series is i can just tell you very quickly that the naming series is uh the name that's going to be given for this item so if you don't want more details please look for those other videos then here we have the item group item group is what allows you to classify your items into different groups for example you may have consumables you may have products you may have services or the way you have grouped your items in your warehouse this is where you can do the grouping and there is a lot of settings you can do in the grouping uh, so it's very important to have that set up properly then we have the units of measure that's the default units of measure for this item 
we are going to see that there is going to be another unit of measure but this is the default one such that when you are making transactions with this item this is what it is going to fetch by default but it will allow you to change to other units of measure that you have allowed within this item all right then the, down before i go to, i open this one i go up here this checkbox that says disabled if you check it this item is not going to be available for any transaction yeah then if you say allow uh, alternative item if you check on this one then this item is going to uh, allow you to set up items that can be used on its behalf so it will allow you to use other items when it's supposed to be the one being used but those are like its replacement then here we have maintain stock now if we leave this as maintain stock you see a number of things are happening let me, let me first of all explain when it is checked maintain stock means that this is a stockable item and by stockable i mean that this is a physical item that you have in your warehouse in your store in your shop so it is something that you can touch with your hands like the one plus 10 t that we have there yeah that is actually an, an item that you can stock but if you are selling services uh, like for example consultation service you see that it's not something you can say you are stocking uh, so you don't have to you need to uncheck this if it is like a service or anything that you don't stock or maybe those things that you are doing drop shipping on uh, because ideally those are not items that you are stocking allow me to close this so that we don't keep getting problems with with that yeah all right then the other thing that is important to note here is that when you check on maintain stock the system or rather erp next maintains a stock ledger for this item so it is very important to know that if you are setting items that you don't want that to happen to you need to uncheck that but if they are stockable items then please make sure you check that then we have has variants variants are basically those items that of course are a variant of an item for example you may have one plus 10 t black then you may have one ten, one plus 10 t blue one plus 10 t yellow all those those are what we call variants and that is why when you click on these variants this variants uh, tab shows up and when you click there you can now add the variants for that specific item yeah then here we have opening stock when we have this maintain stock here this opening stock and valuation rates are there so if i uncheck it you see that those two are going to disappear ideally even the tab that we end up there for inventory again because it's not a stockable item it is not needed if this is not a stockable item so what is opening stock opening stock is the number of uh, for example one plus 10 t's that you have when you are setting this item because remember probably you are not acquiring the system as the first thing when you're setting up a business maybe you have a running business and then you decided to acquire a system and you decided to get here up next because it is free and open source so here we can see that we have 10 1 plus 10 t's and then the valuation rate is basically the cost price of that form we can see it's eighty thousand. so you bought it for eighty thousand, and then this is standard selling rate is how you're going to be selling it we can say for example we are going to be selling it for 125,000. so this is the uh, the buying price and this is the selling price so this one is important when you set it here for a, for the first time when you are creating the item it is going to create a selling uh, price yeah so this is going to be saved as the item selling price for this specific item but if you save it without this figure and then you try to add it later it's not going to, to do anything you need to it will be now saved when you are doing transactions with this item like the uh, like sales invoice and sales orders and things like those but if you want that to be set up immediately then you need to set it up here the other thing that we have here is is fixed asset is fixed asset basically oh what that does is that uh, it converts this item into an asset and uh, this is not a fixed asset of course a fixed asset are those things i think that is easy for accountants in the house they are those things that are fixed for your business like if you have a company car that's a fixed asset if you have an, an like a building that's a fixed asset and so on and so forth so you can also create fixed assets within your p next that's 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 very 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 interesting then you have the description notice that i opened up this here you can put a detailed description of this item you can go here and then you have the units of measure remember when we are up here i told you that we have a default unit of measure there and then down here notice that we have units of measure so these are additional units of measure that you could have for an item 
that is not let me say this is product that is not this one so for example your business may be buying items in one unit and then selling in another unit it will be necessary to put all those units of measure here that are possible for this item so that you are able to uh, easily manage it we are done with the first tab we quickly move to the second tab I again like I said I'm going to be exploring the most important things then I will allow you to go and dig into the rest and I'll leave the link to the description below this video uh, not the description but the link to the tutorial or rather to the documentation of this uh, adding an item below the video so don't worry in the inventory settings uh, rather inventory uh, fields here we have the first thing here is shelf life in this what this is is the when you say for example say here this is five what happens here is that the, when the five days are over you cannot use this item in stock uh, transactions like for example when you are doing manufacturing this item is not going to show up because the system will assume that that item has been spoiled it cannot be used then we have end of life end of life is when you expect the item to expire of course that is easy you can just put it there then we have default material request type M material request is when you raise up a material request the I th the stock uh, quantities are going low and you need to raise a material request so that you can make a purchase or as a purchase order you can either do it by purchase by material transfer from another place by material issue if you're issuing just directly here or manufacture if you are a manufacturing plant you could this could be the end product that you are manufacturing or even as a process as an item or as an assembly item you can do manufacture and then you have customer provided this is when for example you are doing something for a customer and they are the ones that are giving you the goods so you can put this here so that when the items are going low there is going to be a, a document that is pro, that is provided for the customer to give you more materials by default it is it is purchased and i'll leave it as so then we have valuation method valuation method we have three in the system that is in erp next we have fifo moving average and default so whichever you're using in your system i explained this again yesterday when you are doing uh when you are doing inventory you can go ahead and select that coming up here warranty period in this this is if and um, the item has warranty and of course this is um this is our phone so we can do a warranty maybe of 365 days that's a year so you can put that there then we have weight per unit weight per unit this one is how much does it weigh per unit this will be important when for example there are costs that are associated to the weight of the item so you can put that there and then weight uom you can also put that one there i want to skip that and come here allow negative stock remember again yesterday when we were doing stock settings there is a place i we had allow negative stock and I, again i did a lot of explaining there so you can go and listen to that video if you didn't and then here if you want to allow negative stock for this item you can just check on this backwards this is critical if this item is an item that has a barcode such that when you are doing transaction again transactions are again like a selling you can just have your barcodes here now we have you can add your barcode here for example one two three four five six seven and then the barcode there are many this EEN, I think this stands for this stands for European article number. This is the most commonly used, I believe. European article number. You have UPC. This is something that is very much used in America, and the thing is used universal product code. Yeah, universal product code. And of course, we have so many. You can pick whichever. If you're not sure which one, you can pick. You can do some research there, and then pick whichever you can. You are able to pick. Then we have UOM, of course, again, you can click, click, uh, click your UOM and then you are good to go with your barcode. That is going to generate a barcode for that item. Reorder. Auto reorder is basically when you need this item to reorder. Again, I explained this yesterday. When the, the item goes low, then it is going to be reordered. One thing that I like to mention because it was not in yesterday's. When you are setting up this reorder, the first thing you need to set up here is the group of the warehouse. This is the parent warehouse. Uh, because you set reorders per warehouse, of course that makes sense. Because you could be going low in an item in one warehouse and another warehouse has them. So you need to check the reorders per warehouse so that you know which ex which warehouse exactly has low stock. Then you can select the warehouse and then you can do the reorder value like f two. Oh, that is three, two. And then the reorder quantity how many do i want to reorder when we have two in stock we order five and then again here you can choose how do you want how will the reorder be done is it a purchase is it a transfer is it a material issue or is it a manufacturer okay 
and then we have serial numbers down here if you want to track your serial numbers in the item this is where you do it if you click on this is where we have serial number actually let me start here if you click on serial number then here you are required to enter the series of the serial number for example you can see it's giving you abc we can do something like uh, one plus so make it maybe one plus one pl and then you need a dot here and then you need to do that so what these things are going to do they are going to be replaced by numbers so for example this is if it's that one it's going to be one pl dot zero zero one zero zero two zero zero three if you had another one it's going to be zero 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 one zero zero two so if it's a hundred is zero one zero zero yeah so that's an incrementing number so the more you have the bigger the number you have there period that is it for zero numbers if i come to batch this one has a little bit more uh, first of all, if you check has batch these three show up, ha, and the first thing that you are required to do here is to check whether you want this to automatically create the new batches. And when you do that, the same thing shows up like we have we had here, where you need to provide a series. If you don't want, then you are going to uh, manually enter the batch numbers when you are when you are making transactions for this item. Then, if you put has expired date, it is going to start tracking expiry date depending on what we put up there remember that and then retain sample is basically uh, if you want to retain a sample for this item so there is not going to be a time when that sample is sold or it's used in any process like manufacturing it is always going to be there so that it can be used when needed then we have accounting i want to start rushing very fast now accounting is where you can set up the accounting defaults for the item if you open this in full form you see all the important accounting documents for the accountants in the house you can look at this closely so we have default warehouse we have purchases we have sales where we have things like default income account if for example you want all the incomes from this item to go to some account you can set this one here remember this one is an account from your chart of accounts then we have default provisional account we have default expense account and all this so if you, the erp Nix is very flexible and very friendly to accountants if you want these things to be put in specific accounts within your chart of accounts then you can do that at the item level and the system is going to keep tracking the rest for you yeah then we have purchases again here we have some defaults for purchases i don't want to go into the details of that please go ahead and dig in a little bit if you have any question here this a field you don't understand please feel free there is a comment section on the below this video comment there i'll be more than happy to assist you then we have sales sales are some important things like grant commission this is for sales people if you uh, they are selling your item you would sometimes like them to get some commission so you can check that and they are going to get their commissions then um default sales unit of measure this is if you want to set up the default of sales of measure for this item and of course the maximum discount that you allow your customers to get when they are buying this item then we have tax you can also ta set tax templates or tax setting do tax settings at the item level so that again very interesting and then we have quality remember uh, i think i spoke about quality if not yesterday probably the day before you can do quality inspection for each and every item and this is important especially when you are doing purchases you want to check the items to see whether they are of the quality that you ordered and there is going to be a template that is going to be used to see this one is here so erp next has already taken care of all that and you see here the first checkbox actually we have is inspection required before purchase so before you make a purchase for an item can somebody go there with this template and and of course do the inspection so that you confirm that every item is in the right state that you ordered then you can pick a template here and again remember these templates can be customized to your liking and then here we have the same thing but now this time for delivery note and then we have manufacturing uh these are just if you want to include the item in manufacturing and then supply raw materials for purchases i don't want to go into the details of those if you are in manufacturing by the way your is very uh, uh very uh, very good for manufacturing companies if you have interest please let us know we are ready to do you a free demo so that you can be comfortable before you make your decision i want to stop that video there if you have not liked uh, this video already please go ahead and do it and if you know you there's someone that can benefit from it share it with them we want your next to be solving problems for as many uh, for as many people as possible and also also if you have not uh, followed me on youtube please go ahead and do it that is going to give me more motivation and of course remember to follow me on linkedin because that is where i post 
most of the content even that that which that which does not get into uh, linkedin i mean into youtube is there in linkedin and that having been said thank you so much for listening and watching i hope to see you tomorrow for the next video